the first thing I'd like you to do is to take your ruler and draw a horizon line. So remember the horizon is where the earth and the sky meets. And when we're talking about it in art, it's a straight horizontal line. And I'm placing it on the bottom third. So towards the lower part of your paper. And now I'm gonna put in a vanishing point. So that's just a dot. And I'm putting it above the horizon line and it's not in the center, it's off a little bit to one side. It's off to that left-hand side there. So now we're going to be taking our ruler just below the horizon line, and we are going to be drawing in a rectangle. So I'm lining it up. I'm trying to make sure that it's parallel to that uh, horizon line there. And I'm marking mine at two inches, and I'm gonna go Two inches by one and a half. So this sh short side is one and a half inches. You can see me measuring there with my ruler. And I find that measuring helps me to be a little bit more precise. So again, two inches on the long side, one and a half inches on the short side. I'm just gonna redraw that line right there. Okay, so there's my rectangle. And now I'm going to find the center of my rectangle. And I could just measure it, because it's two inches, so I could measure or take two inches and divide it in half, which is one inch. But I wanna show you another way. This is if you don't have a measurement. You line up angle to angle and you draw an X. So I'm lining up opposite angles here to create that X. So it's corner to corner. And then from the center of that X right there, I'm going to be drawing a vertical line up. So I'm showing you this method, even though you could, in theory, measure it and divide it, just so that if you ever are presented with a rectangle and you want to find the center line, you'll know how to do it just by doing a simple X in the corners. So there is that little vertical pole straight up from there. That's going to be the top pole of the roof. So I know that it is right in the center. And I just drew a little bit of an extra lip out there for where the gutters would be or the eave. And I want to make sure that they're both equal in length. And then I'm going to connect up the top pole of the roof, so that vertical line, to the corner there, to the roof. And what that should give me is a triangle shape on top of that rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and erase out those lines inside of that front of the house, because this will become the front. So I'm going to erase all the interior lines. So that includes the X, that includes the horizon line. So I'm just cleaning that up so that way I don't get confused by all those lines intersecting and kind of getting in the way there. So with one point perspective, there's oftentimes a lot of erasing and cleanup. And that's why it's always good to draw lightly in the first place. It'll just make that part of it easier if you have drawn lightly. Okay, now we're going to start to create the side of the house because we're really only seeing a flat house. So we're gonna connect up these corners that I'm pointing to, to the vanishing point. And they're only along the left-hand side. So I'm going to line up the bottom of the house with the VP <clears throat> vanishing point. And you can see I'm drawing super light since I know I'm gonna erase some of those lines. There's a point right there, right at the gutter. There's actually two lines, lines that happen there. And then there's a, the top part of the roof that will connect to the vanishing point. So really there are only four lines there at the moment that are connecting to the vanishing point. So now I'm gonna close off this house because it is going back in space indefinitely to that vanishing point. So here's the rule when you're closing off a side. You have to think about parallel lines. So in this case I'm making a parallel line to the side of the house which is a vertical 
and then I'm taking that angle that's up by the gutter, which is a little tiny baby horizontal line, and I'm putting it back there. And then I'm going to take the pitch of the roof. So that's the angle of the roof. And I like to do this thing where I actually will slide. There's that angle, you can see it. I will slide my ruler. I will hold it up against the angle I want, slide it back to transfer it. So now this is looking more like a 3D object. You can see more than one side of it. I'm just going to erase the horizon line where it goes through the house. I don't want to get distracted by it. I'm planning on doing the front side first. So I'm going to put in some windows. And the great thing about the front side is it does not go back to any vanishing point. It's just simply going to be a series of straight lines. So for windows, those should be either a rectangle or a square. And I'm going with simplified farm windows. So I'm just doing a rectangle. I'm going to divide the rectangle in half. And by the way, you, you are welcome to choose a different style of window. You don't have to make it like this one. So a simple rectangle with a kind of a plus sign in the middle. So a little bit lower, I'm placing another grouping of windows. Because I like homes that have lots of windows. So again, a simple rectangle. Usually if you have two opposite windows, which I'm going for right now, they are matched windows, usually. Not always, but oftentimes. So that means that they are on the same level and the, about the same size. If you want it to be really accurate, you can measure it, but you don't have to. You can just kind of eyeball it, which was what I was doing there. And I'm going again for that same style of window as the first one. And I'm just ma making these a matched pair. And then I'm going to put a doorway. So I'm going to let that uh, doorway be tall and rectangular, so skinny rectangle. So now we're addressing the other side. I want you to put a few windows there too. So this part's a little bit tricky. You're starting with a vertical line and then you're connecting the top and bottom of that vertical line to the vanishing point. Well, I'm lining up my ruler to the vanishing point and to the bottom of that vertical line. And you can see I'm drawing really lightly. I'm gonna do the same thing to the top, line up with the vanishing point, to the top of that vertical line, draw a line across. So now I need to close off that shape because that window is going back infinitely. So I'm going to make another vertical line. So that's the parallel line there. So that closes off, it makes a rectangle. I'm actually going to erase the gap in between that window and the next window I'm gonna draw. So it's easy for the next one because you already have the guidelines in place. All you need to do is draw a vertical line between those two lines that you drew originally that go back to the vanishing point. And then to get the line dividing the window into the windowsill. Oh, here I'm drawing that back in just to make sure you can see it. To do the middle line that's dividing the window in half, you line it up with the vanishing point and you draw in that middle line. You can see it's lined up to the vanishing point there. Um, notice that the window that's closer, I deliberately made wider, so bigger. The one that's farther back is a little bit skinnier. So I had to do a doorknob. It's up to you if you want to put one in or not. Your, your call on that. So now I'm doing the line of the sidewalk. 
and it's cool because the sidewalk it looks as though you're actually standing on it from that point of view and you can look all the way down the street and all these lines do go back to the vanishing point or at least close enough so there's grass there's a lawn and then there's a sidewalk which is a skinny path that's leading to the point and then there's an extra little patch of lawn that's the place where people usually have um, some trees right next to the sidewalk. This yard didn't happen to have that. And there's the street itself. And that street does line up to the vanishing point too. So I'm just going to give some tone, some shading a little bit to the sidewalk so I can tell that that is sidewalk and not grass. Because the grass is a little bit lighter in, in hue than or in value than the sidewalk. This next step is pretty fun. This is where you get to put in all those organic shapes. So trees and bushes and shrubs. And I'm simplifying. I'm not drawing every single thing I'm seeing. But one thing I am doing is I do a lot of continuous line drawings when I'm trying to draw trees. So I put my pencil down on the paper and I don't lift up very much. It's not that you can't. I just feel like I'm more effective when I'm doing it this way. Um, that way I can keep an eye more on the image that I'm looking at versus my drawing. So I'm looking more at the reference there. And I am playing with one tree overlapping another because remember overlap helps convey depth. It helps convey this feeling of things going way far away. Okay, so I'm getting that trunk of the tree in there. I'm trying to make sure it's actually behind the building and not in front of it. And then I'm going to erase some of those lines that are going back to the vanishing point. I no longer need those. They're like threads or like spider webs. I'm just going to snip those threads so that I, I don't get distracted by them when I go to shade. It can be confusing if you were to leave those marks. That's why I always make sure that I erase them up before I move on to shading. And I'm just going to pop in one more little shrubby bush there because I think it's fun. It's this cone shape one. And whenever you have variety, even if it's amongst like shrubs or bushes or trees, um, that adds interest to your drawing. So because it's a different shape than all the other trees, it, it kind of adds some more interest there. At this point, we're going to start to shade. So I noticed that the front side of the house is the side that is mostly in shadow. So I'm going to be shading that front side. And I'm, I've put this in time lapse. That way you don't have to sit and watch me shade meticulously. Um, it'll be much quicker this way. And there is a little shading to the roof. I'm not sure if you can see that, but the roof is very lightly shaded. And I intentionally made sure I gave you a reference that was not in color, that it was in black and white to help you guys to see the values a little bit clearer. And the side of this house is pretty light. I mean, it's white and it's in uh, direct sunlight on that left-hand side. So I'm going to let that be pure white of the paper. Whenever you have a focal point, that's the one area where um, you want the most contrast to be. So the house becomes the focal point in this drawing. And because the house is so light in hue or value and having a tree behind it and some other shrubs and foliage behind it go dark, it helps to heighten that contrast. So it's contrast of light and contrast of texture as well. There's also some contrast in uh, shapes too. There's the organic shape of the tree and then there's the more geometric shape of the house. So all that stuff is good. And you can see I'm really darkening some areas, keeping some other areas light on purpose. I'm thinking about as things go back, they tend to go lighter, like in those distant trees, the ones that are far back. The trees that are closer to me, I'm allowing to go a little bit darker, particularly if they're in shadow. 
and there is the street itself. And just remember with this street, it's going to be darker in front, a little bit paler as it goes back to heading towards that vanishing point. And I'm also just leaving that vanishing point there. I'm just going to allow that point to sit on the drawing. It's fine. 